Tell me about this hypothetical conversation. How does this, how does this come about where you're asked a question that doesn't pertain to an actual case? Uh, that, that, this, this is very good. Um, for, first of all, the, the judges thought that that conversation might not have taken place. I am absolutely adamant that conversation took place. And my lawyers have got uh, corroborating evidence to show that. So, yes, this conversation took place. My manager took me on one side. He asked me various questions. And he said, well, summarize this, summarize this, David, by saying, if you had somebody who was obviously a man, six foot tall with a beard, and said, call me she or Mrs., would you do it? And I gave the reply, which I've given since, which is, as a Christian, in good conscience, I could not do that. Right. So you, you so, immediately cited your religion, correct? I mean, it was, that's absolutely clear, because that, that's the reason why I can't do that. It would be dishonoring to my God to do that. And then what was the reaction immediately in that conversation from your manager when you cited your religious belief? Well, I, th I think the first thing is, you know, there, were, there weren't sparks and, and you know, there's there a fair amount of mutual respect there. But uh, his reaction was that he considered that if I wouldn't change my views uh, and do what was required of me, um, that uh, I, I, I would not expect to keep my job. He wouldn't have the final decision in that, but I could very much expect to lose my job. Now, talk to me a little bit about how this office works. They didn't do anything to try to accommodate your religious beliefs, say refer a patient who wanted to identify with pronouns that did not match their biological gender, say to a different doctor? Um, they, 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 well, again, in court, it came out, they, had, they had, did have some discussion about that. But it seems to me that from the start, the, the question was, well, this guy's are, uh, views are so... Um, off the ranch, so to speak, that uh, there's no possibility of accommodating him. And uh, so in that case, um, the, the, they decided I couldn't work for them, and that would be the end of it. So just quickly like that. And so um, once you were terminated, you appealed this. Mm -hmm. That ruling was just handed down, you know, today, yesterday, given the time change between here and the yes. UK. And they said that your views were incompatible with human dignity? I think what I have to say is this, that, that we did not know after the court case whether we would win or lose. Uh, but this ruling from the judges is way, way more severe and problematic than we even imagined it could be. There are three big things that come out uh, first of mind. The first is this, it requires um, uh, forced speech where we are told uh, we must speak in a certain way to certain people, and this is a very big legal issue, so we've got forced or compelled speech now um, in this legal case. The second is that my belief that mankind is created male and female is considered now to be inconsistent with human dignity. Now, I'm sorry, I'm not a legal person, I'm a doctor. I could almost laugh at that um, because uh, of the nature of men and women. Um, but uh, the third thing, and this is very sinister indeed, is that he went on to say, I think in paragraph 232 of the judgment, that my broader Christian views uh, are incompatible with human dignity as well. And that seems to be a blow struck at the whole of Christianity. Um, so, so this is like an enormous thing that's happened here. It's, it's, like, it's like the whole of Christianity is found to be incompatible uh, with society in the days in which we're living.